So, welcome you to Krishnakanta Hendrick State Open University and we feel very honored to have a guest of yours teacher among us. So, thank you sir. At that epoch making moment yeah. when the great award was conferred on you, what was your immediate reaction to it? Actually the immediate reaction was a kind of uh, surprise for me because um, I never thought that uh, the most uh, you know uh, respected or recognized prize will come to me or through me for the most neglected, most vulnerable, most abused children on the earth. I immediately reacted to my people who came and hugged me and kissed and they were all crying in tears and so emotional and, and, and excited. I said that, look, this is not the prize for Kailas Satyarthi alone. This is the biggest ever recognition to the cause, the cause which has been largely neglected, largely ignored, the cause of wiseless children, the cause of faceless children on the earth. They are recognized today at that highest level of uh, recognition. But this is also the prize for all my countrymen. Right. All my people, all my sisters and brothers from the remotest part of northeastern India up to south west, from east to west, south, south to north entire countryman because it is for the first time when the Nobel Peace Prize is being conferred to an Indian born, a Desi Indian uh, and someone who was not um, a kind of star or a celebrity or someone who was very popular and known to the people because this is the recognition to my motherland, to my country, to my nation. Right. So the award goes to everyone. So don't feel uh, a sense of ego as an individual. I told my people, mm -hmm. every Indian should feel pride in it so that we all feel the moral responsibility to put an end to child labor and child slavery in our country and globally. Right. So, <coughs> in one of the autographs that I have seen, you have given to one of our university colleagues you have written there that sustainable development is not possible unless and until the rights of all children, all children are protected. So, so how do you put the linkage between sustainable development and the rights of the children? Because generally when we teach or we are taught that sustainable development is regarding protecting the nature so that the in future our generations are safeguarded. So you have added a new dimension to it. So we would be very happy if you kindly explain it. Oh Baba, <laughs> <laughs> I should be very careful <laughs> when I am putting my signature <laughs> and writing something. <laughs> Actually I was warned by many people that whatever you speak or whatever you write could uh, become a reason for more <laughs> research <laughs> and uh, so at, it is for the researchers. It is okay. for your university, you can do it how okay. to, <laughs> but, uh, but let me tell you that sustainability is all about what I call four P's. One P is people. If people are not sustainable, that means their liberty, their dignity, their opportunities, if they are not maintained, we cannot have sustainability, people, first P. The second P is planet. All of us know that how this climate change, the global warming and other kind of disasters, most of them I would say are man-made disasters whom we are responsible for have brought us to a situation of suicidal. So, 
planet has to be preserved and protected. It has to be respected. We in India, in our philosophy, in our culture, in our tradition, we learn that our relationship with the land is mother and son relationship. Dharti Mata hai hamari. And that mother land, not just India, the land, the whole planet is rich of everything. But we kept a large number of people poor and hungry. And eventually, the greediness of some people, which is a splitting Mother Earth, the Mother Planet, has brought to this situation. So we have to ensure that the economic growth, the industrialization, the consumerism must not be at the cost of planet. Planet is must. Second P. The third P is, uh, is peace. So without peace, peace means equilibrium of mind, equilibrium in the society, equilibrium between human beings and nature. And that's why the peace has been one of the fundamental values or virtues which drived Indian philosophy, which drove Indian philosophy. So peace is important. Peace is not something which is just a political thing which is negotiated on table, political table. Peace is not something which is just preached and taught in the churches and temples and mosques. Peace is something which should be the culture of life. We can live with peace, so peace is important for sustainable societies, for sustainability. <coughs> and third and fourthly, the fourth peace prosperity. We have to get rid of poverty. Prosperity against poverty. Everybody has some sort, sort of aspiration or desire to become wealthier or prosperous. That should not be ignored. S but that prosperity should be inclusive prosperity. Everybody can be benefited out of it. So people, planet, peace and prosperity. Without them, we cannot create sustainability. Now come to the child rights, which is very directly linked with that. If the children are denied childhood, then they are easy to be manipulated and misused, brainwashed by the fanatic and fundamentalist forces. And they may be misused against peace, against human prosperity, right. against development. So that's one aspect that how the children have to be treated and respected. Then education. We live in a world which is or in, in an era which is basically driven by the knowledge economy. We live in the age of knowledge economy. Without information, without knowledge, we cannot think of development. We cannot think of, you know, economic growth. We cannot think of uh, social justice or gender equity and justice. Education is the key for all that. So children have to be educated. All children must be educated. So their right to education must be the fundamentally uh, prioritized right, should be prioritized. And that means we should have good laws and constitutional provisions globally. That means we have to substantiate all these provisions with adequate funding and budgetary allocations and so on. So the financial aspect should be taken care of. So all children must receive good quality education and that is a prerequisite for sustainability. That is the right. So the freedom of children, education of children are very, very fundamental to bring about sustainability of people, of planet, of peace and prosperity. Thank you. Sir.